So honestly, guys, I don't make videos like this very often. This tool drastically changed everything. Not only does this tool help you understand specific crypto functions, but it allows you to compare and contrast and gives you additional information of what you should learn. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to tell you what are the best parts of Q&A 3, how you should use it. And we've got Nat here. Nat. Hi. So I'll be honest here. I think, I think you've been using this tool a lot and you saved a lot of your time, right? I actually used this tool to do research for this video as well. <laughs> So, so yeah, so, so she's, she, you freed up pretty much all your time, yeah. right? So this is why she gets more coffee breaks. But anyways, um, it's a really valuable tool in crypto and she's going to teach you everything to know about. If you've used AI tools such as ChatGPT, you'll know how much easier it makes our lives, especially when doing research or asking questions. But the biggest limitation at say for ChatGPT, especially in terms of Web3 research, is that ChatGPT's knowledge cutoff date is September 2021. But we all know that everything in the crypto space moves and changes at a rapid speed, which means crypto-related data that you get from ChatGPT might not be updated and is most likely inaccurate. For example, if you were to ask ChatGPT what is Ethereum, they'll still say that Ethereum is a proof-of-work blockchain while Q&A 3 is really a game changer for Web3 because not only is it an AI tool dedicated to crypto, but their database is basically real-time data. And here are a few features that I really, really like about Q&A 3. For example, if I were to search biggest crypto-related news on 6 July 2023, Q&A 3 is able to show me the latest news in the past day. So let's search up how updated these news are just copy this into Google. So from here, we can see that this piece of news came out just nine hours ago, which shows that the Q&A 3 data is pretty much immediate. Not only does Q&A 3 have latest crypto related news, but they also have information on the hottest crypto gossips. So if I want to know what happened between Machi Big Brother and Sack XBT, I can also search it up on Q&A 3. But this time I also want to know what happened exactly on what dates. So I'll add by timeline with dates as a prompt. So as we can see, Q&A 3 is able to show a timeline of events that happened between Mashi Big Brother and Sakik CT, and it's pretty detailed as well. Q&A 3 is also able to analyze multiple sources such as social media platforms, on-chain data, white paper, to show you what the current market sentiment is, uh, to show you whether the general public is bearish or bullish. So let's search it up. Usually Q&A 3 provides three part answers and the first one is usually Web3 news. So Web3 news includes latest updates, developments and events happening around Web3. And as the news mainly discusses Bitcoin price, Web3 news will only surround Bitcoin related findings on this particular topic, which is market sentiment. So the second part is knowledge graph. A uh, knowledge graph gathers all information on the internet and gives us a structured summary on the related topic. As we can see here, knowledge graph gave us a summary of the performance of major tokens and XRP, likely because of the Ripple and SEC lawsuit. And the last part is research report. So research report provides facts, analysis, and even performance evaluation and user feedback of the topic. So here they analyze different market participants such as banks, um, traders, and even the economy of the US. But it is important to note that these three sections might give you different opinions on the certain topics you're searching for, so you will have to be aware of that. But now let's talk about some limitations that Q&A 3 has. So I've been using Q&A 3 for around a week now, and overall it's a very user-friendly platform, and I haven't found any bugs to it yet. But some limitations I'd say it has is that it provides better answers when you're asking a question rather than giving command statements. For example, if I wanted to know what Bitcoin's price is in the past week, it would be better if I asked Q&A 3, can you show me a table of Bitcoin price this week? They would generate a table with Bitcoin's price in the past week. They'll also give you a summary on the price of Bitcoin, at what price it peaked, and um, what the lowest price is in the past week. However, if I were to ask, present Bitcoin's price in the past week in the table, unfortunately, Q&A 3 seems to not understand what I want them to do or what answer I want them to generate. And 
they are unable to find any relevant information regarding this topic. I would also like to point out that Q&A 3 is still relatively new, and there are some questions that they are unable to answer yet. But I'm very impressed with the platform because their team is really working hard to improve it every day. So while I was doing research yesterday, the price tracker for Q&A 3 was only updated till July 1st. However, when filming it today, they have already modified their price tracker and it is now up to date. And lastly, you may have noticed that there's a section underneath each answer, which asks you to vote how satisfied you are with their answer. And by voting and asking questions on the platform, you will earn Q&A 3 credit and will be eligible for future airdrops. So this platform is still in early stages, and we don't know if they will be launching their token or whether there will actually be an airdrop. But I would recommend you to sign into Q&A 3 using your email or wallet. Uh, they support multiple wallets such as Coinbase, Metamask, Phantom, or Ledger to start earning points or credits. Because the platform did suggest that by earning credits, these credits can be used for various purposes such as to unlock premium, access exclusive content, or participate in special events. And we do see that Q&A 3 is free for a limited time only. And once you log in, you'll have a thousand coins to start with, and each question will cost you one token. So I would suggest following them on Twitter because they have user experience surveys and different community events available for you to participate in for a chance to earn platform credits in case you use up your coins and they start charging you at a later stage. So that concludes our video for today. Thank you for watching. I would also like to thank our sponsor for today's video, Bybit. If you haven't signed for Bybit, sign up with our link down below and you can get up to 30,000 in rewards. We have also done other tutorials as well as airdrop videos, so do check them out if you're interested. And don't forget to like, share, and comment down below if you like this type of videos. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, bye!